Introduction Thirteen billion years ago, energy and matter exploded, and the universe was born, and one billion years later, there were stars. Our solar system, Sun, Earth, and other planets were created around 4.6 billion years ago, and 3.8 billion years ago, our Earth had everything that was necessary for life to sustain and evolve. There was atmosphere, seas, and a thin and solid crust around the Earth. Continental plates together which made up the Earth's crust 250 million years ago was known as a Pangaea. The Pangaea slowly began to break up and form masses of land which we call continents. It was about 200,000 to 250,000 years ago that our ancestors, the Homo sapiens, appeared in Africa. They slowly learned to communicate among themselves and developed language, which helped in passing down the language and cultures of their society. Humans migrated to all the continents except Antarctica, who were mostly gatherers who collected nuts, berries, leaves and hunters who made nets to set trap games, fished with harpoons and hunted for big animals like bison, mammoths in groups. They were intelligent and made the best use of the sources they had. They used bones, hides, antlers and stone to craft weapons, jewellery, homes, tools, pottery and clothes. They were also artistic and made beautiful paintings in the caves they lived, carved amazing sculptures in wood, bone and stone. As ice melted, it uncovered much land and trees. Birds and animals started flourishing in North America and Eurasia. The huge animals of Ice Age were replaced by smaller animals, and as human population grew, the demand for food also increased and was the main reason why farming started. Farming helped the people to have permanent homes and stay at one place. Humans evolved in intelligence and also started taming and domesticating animals as pets. It was around this time that man first used metals, copper tools. Increased farming helped people to settle which formed villages, mostly in the Nile Valley and Fertile Crescent, and then spread in the other parts of Afro-Eurasia and America. These settlements led to civilizations, and Egypt, Mesopotamia, and Indus Valley were some of the densely populated civilizations which were intelligently built and displayed some intensely clever works of the people of those times. The pyramids show their creative and beautiful work, which is entirely praiseworthy. Written language left by them helped to know their style of living and traditions they followed. Development of mankind was fast after the civilizations and with thousands of inventions and developments which have happened. There is much which comes under the history of the world and there is no part of it which is not interesting. Chapter 1 Prehistory Early Humans According to studies, it has been concluded that the Australopithecian genus was the first apes to walk upright like humans, from which Homo came gradually. About 200,000 years ago in Africa, anatomically modern humans rose and showed modern behaviour around 50,000 years ago. Most of the expansion of the human race took place at the ending of Ice Age and learned to colonize about 12,000 years back and it is during this time they got familiar with fire and learned to cook besides hunt and gather. There are early sculptures and cave paintings found which depict their use of weapons and ways of life. Rise of Civilizations 8000 BCE marked the Neolithic Revolution and other important discoveries like wheel, mathematics, cursive script, planting of crops, astronomy and agriculture. With farming, the population grew and formed cities, then states and eventually civilizations. Agriculture helped in food surpluses and there were many who were not engaged in farming directly which gave rise to manufacturing, trade and politics. Same of the important civilizations back then were Harappan civilization, Mesopotamian civilization, Egyptian civilization, 
Indus Valley Civilization and Chinese Civilization. All the civilizations flourished beside famous rivers. The civilizations had highly developed and had a controlling government, language and writing system, trade and commerce, social structures and complex economy. With societies came religion where natural powers like sun, moon, sky and sea were worshipped. The religion system also gave rise to priests, shrines, temples and religious scriptures, and some of the oldest date back to 2400 and 2300 BCE, which are Egyptian pyramid texts. Chapter 2 Ancient History Cradles of Civilization There are three age system, which is comprised in the Bronze Age, Stone Age and Iron Age. Civilizations in this era flourished along the fertile rivers like Nile in Egypt, Yellow River and Yangtze River in China, Indus in India and Euphrates and Tigris in Mesopotamia. One of the most complex civilizations of these times happened to be Sumer, a pictorial form of writing which used pictographs known as the cuneiform script was developed here. These symbols were drawn on clay tablets with a blunt reed used for a stylus or pen. Administration became easy once writing developed. Transportation developed through seas and rivers, and this period also saw chariots and horse-paced cavalry. The first powerful civilization which had a large territory was in Egypt, where Upper and Lower Egypt were united in 3100 BCE. Other civilizations were Minoan in Crete and Akkadian and Assyria in Mesopotamia. Over the millennium, civilizations developed and trade became important and aided in increasing the power of the civilizations. In 2500 BCE, Vedic period laid its foundations in India, which founded many important cultures of Hinduism and important republics like Mahajanapadas. Though some of the most complex civilizations rose in the East, Americas had some of the native and simple societies, and it was only when Mesoamerica was formed between 1500 BCE to 500 BCE that the civilizations like Maya, Olmec, Nazca, Moche, and Zapotec were more centralized and complex. They grew crops, mainly maize, and created a diverse religion and culture. Axial Age Axial Age started in the 8th century BCE, and this period saw many philosophical ideas and transformations in religions. Some of them include Buddhism, Jainism, Persian Zoroastrianism, Confucianism, Taoism, Legalism, Jewish Monotheism, and Ancient Greek Philosophy. Regional Empires the period 500 BCE to 500 CE saw many civilizations which were much organized with uniting philosophies, trained armies and radical administrations were formed so that the emperor could rule over large territories. The military seizure of lands by the bigger civilizations bought peace and encouraged trade internationally. The most famous civilizations during this time were the Median Empire, which is the present Iran, but it also extended to modern Turkey and India. The empire began from 678 BCE and also way to Iranian and Sassanid empires, 224 to 651 CE. The Athenian Empire was succeeded by the Delian League from 478 BCE, which is now Greece. The boundaries of Greece were further extended into India by Alexander the Great of Macedon, building a vast empire from 356 to 323 BCE. His Hellenistic successor further extended the era which lasted from 323 to 30th BCE. Almost all of South Asia of what is India was united by the Mauryan Empire from 322 to 185th BCE. 
and the land flourished under the reign of Ashoka the Great and the Gupta dynasty, amazed the world with their wonderful reign and the period to be known as the Golden Age from the 4th to 6th century. Southern India was ruled by three powerful dynasties, the Kolas, Karas and Pandyas. The 4th and 5th century set foundations of the Hindu culture. The present-day Italy was once the gigantic Roman Empire, which began in the 3rd century BCE, which later split into eastern and western regions. The western regions fell in 476 CE, whereas the eastern region, which was Byzantine, continued for another thousand years, till the Ottomans overthrew them. From 2021 to 2006 BCE, the Qin dynasty in China advanced in many ways and was followed by the Han dynasty. They developed copper instrument stand they proposed in areas of astronomy, technology, education, mathematics and other fields. The present day of Ethiopia was the famous civilization of Aksumit Empire. They had their own currency and carved big monolithic stella like obelisk of Aksum to spot their emperor's graves. Some of the famous civilizations in the Americas were Zapotec in the 200 BCE to 100 CE, the Mayan civilization from 250 to 900 CE, after which the Olmec Empire followed, and finally the Aztecs built their empire on the bordering cultures and were influenced by Toltecs. Declines, Falls and Greater Rises The major problem that all the empires had was maintaining a huge army and supporting the government, or the pressure was on the farmers and the lower class of the society. All this unrest within civilizations led to wars and battles, and the people fought among themselves, which ultimately led to the downfall of the civilizations. Other tribes took this opportunity of the already fighting nations and overpowered them. Chapter 3 Post Classical History This era is begun in the 5th century and is marked by the fall of the Western Empire. The eastern part of the Roman Empire was Byzantine and endured until Middle Ages, whereas the western part of the empire was divided into smaller kingdoms, which was later allied under Holy Roman Empire. Post-classical times also parallel the Islamic conquests following the Islamic Golden Age and the dawn of Arab slavery, which was later followed by invasions from the Mongols in Central Asia and Middle East and the establishment of the Ottoman Empire in 1299. The southern part of Asia saw successions of Middle Kingdoms of India, which was trailed by establishment of Islamic empires here. The Songhai and Mali empires flourished in Western Africa, whereas because of Asian trades in the southeast coast of Africa, a mix of Muslim culture called Swahili flourished. China had empires of Sui, Tang, Yuan, Song, and the commencement of Ming Dynasty. Americas saw Aztecs, Maya and Incas. Western Asia and North Africa Before Islam could begin in 7th century, Middle East was subjugated by the Persian Empire of Sasanian and the Roman Byzantine Empire. They were always with war against each other and fought for lands of Anatolia, Levant, Americas and other regions. The reason was more than just lands. They also fought for culture and religion. They Christian and Hellenistic cultures competed against Zoroastrian religion and Persian-Iranian beliefs. Once Islam was founded, the empires were soon overpowered and Islam had a great impact on economic, political and military past of the Middle East. Their expansions began in 1750 CE and had most parts of Middle East, North Africa and some parts of Europe under their banner. Learning and trade flourished and those who came to trade in other empires took back inventions and discoveries. The European king tried to take back the land of the Muslims through the army of crusades, but was unsuccessful and lost even more land to the Ottoman Turks. 
The domination of the Arabs ended in the 11th century when the Mongols took over their lands. The Mongols faded soon and the lands were occupied by the Turks of the Ottoman Empire in 1299. Europe The early times of the Middle Ages in Europe witnessed deurbanization, depopulation and barbaric invasions. The invaders formed their empires on what remained of the Western Roman Empire. Middle East and North Africa, which earlier under the Eastern Roman Empire, were captured by the Islamic conquerors in the 7th century. Even though new kingdoms took over the Roman Empire, Christianity spread in Europe and several monasteries were founded, and the Carolingian dynasty covered much of Europe, but their lands were taken by the Magyars, Saracens and Vikings. Middle Ages witnessed manorialism and feudalism, where the society's lower class was subjugated to the upper class and had to pay rents and offer services for the lands they got from nobles. The Crusades in the 1095 tried to take back the Holy Land from the Muslims, but failed. However, they were able to establish a few Christian states in the Near East and build many Gothic cathedrals. The later part of the Middle Ages faced famine, war and plagues, which ate in to the populace of Western Europe. The bubonic plague, Black Death, alone killed about one-third of the total population in a matter of three years, 1347 to 1350. South Asia The Aksumite Empire in the sub-Saharan Africa declined in 7th century and the Zagwe dynasty took its place. The Zagwes were famous for rock-cut architecture in Lalibela, who followed by the Solomonic dynasty and continued to rule till the 20th century. Islamic empires like Mali, Kanem, Songhai and Kana rose in the western parts of Africa. They controlled the trans-Saharan trade in ivory, gold, sold and slaves. Southern African empires included the Benin and Oyo empires. The Akan, who were famous for their complicated architecture, and the Igbo kingdom of Nri, who excelled in producing advanced art in bronze. Modern Zimbabwe had many kingdoms that grew from the kingdom of Mapungubwe. Their main source of income was trade with the Swahilis, who resided on the coast of eastern Africa. The Swahili were an intelligent clan who built great nations and port cities like Kilwa, Mombasa and Zanzibar and traded with Arabs and Asians who taught them Islam. East Asia After the fall of Guptas in India, the land was divided in many small states. The Muslim invasions began in 711 CE in the western frontiers. Although the Arabs were stopped that time, but Islam still took its roots in India because of the Arab traders who traded in the west coast. The post-classical kingdoms of southern India include the Kolas, Mughals, Chakulias, Rashtrakutas, Marathas and Islamic Mughals. Science, literature, art, engineering, philosophy and astronomy were encouraged by the kings of these dynasties. Central Asia Sui dynasty fought their way to Central Asia by defeating Turkic nomads. The Tang Empire battled the Tibetan Empire to control Tang dynasty. Islam started to spread in the region by the 8th century and soon became the faith of many. Buddhism continued to be embraced by people in the south. The Arabs gained control over some parts of Central Asia as they had an effective military power that could fire the nomads of the steppe. 6th and 7th centuries of Central Asia were controlled by a powerful nomadic group known as Hephthalites, and in the 10th and 11th centuries the land was distributed among different powerful kingdoms like Seljuk Turks, Khwarezmid Empire and Samanid Dynasty. The most remarkable power with Central Asia witnessed was that of Genghis Khan of Mongolia. After his death in 1227, the whole of Central Asia was ruled by his successor, Changatai Kanate. 
a Mongol military, Timur, conquered much land in 1369, but after his death the territory was divided into smaller areas like Kanate of Bukhara, Kanate of Kokhand, Kanate of Kiva and Kanate of Kashkar. Southeast Asia The early Middle Ages of Southeast Asia saw Kingdom of Funan fall into the hands of Chenla Kingdom, which was later replaced by Khmer Empire in 802 CE. Before Industrial Age, Khmer has one of the largest cities in the world, Angkor, which had thousands of temples, including the famous Angkor Wat. The main powerful kingdoms of the Thai were Ayutthaya and Shukothai. Ninth century saw kingdoms like Pagan, Lavo, Sirijayan, Champa, Dai Viet, Haripunchai, Majapahit, Langsang, and Ava in power. Islam spread in the beginning of the 13th century, and many Malay states also emerged during the same time. Oceania Between 1200th and 1500th, the Tui Tonga Empire flourished through Micronesia, Polynesia and Melanesia. The Tongan language, culture and domination spread entirely and influenced the Nuhe, Rotuma, East Tueva, Futuna, Samoa and many other islands of New Caledonia, Vanuatu, Micronesia and the Loyalty Islands. There are no written records for these kingdoms and writing was introduced only when the Europeans began exploring the islands. Prehistories have estimated through careful analysis on the basis of archaeology, linguistics, colonial ethnography and oral traditions. The Americas in the North America, Mississippian culture in the modern United States of America was rose to power in 800 CE. From 9th to 13th centuries, the ancient Pueblo people and their ancestors built many structures which continued to be some of the largest buildings in North America until the 19th century. The Maya and the Teotihuacan civilizations fell in Mesoamerica and the Aztec took their place in the 14th and the Aztec took their place in the 14th and 15th century. 14th and 15th century of South America has the Incas flourishing their empire in the entire Andes mountain range. They were an advanced society and were skilled in masonry and road system. Chapter 4 Modern History Modern history is also known as the modern times or modern era and is the history of the age following the Middle Ages. Early Modern Period the historians use the term early modern period to refer to the ages between Middle Ages and Industrial Revolution, which is between 1500th to 1800. The era characterizes the rise of science and by the swift growth in politics, technology and a nation state. A nation state is one which adjoins the administrative entity of a state to the traditional entity of a nation from which it purposes to stem its governmental legality to rule in hypothetically its position as an autonomous state if one takes the declarative theory of statehood as disparate to the constitutive theory. Capitalist economies like Genoa rose in the northern Italy republics. Mercantilism dominated the early modern period and feudalism, serfdom and the power of Catholic Church also gained certain heights but eventually disappeared. The era also includes the European colonial expansion, Age of Discovery, Thirty Years' War and pinnacle of European witch-hunting. Renaissance 14th century Europe's renaissance comprised of economic and social rise of Europe and the rediscovery of all the scientific discoveries made in the classical world. Renaissance also stimulated an ethos of curiosity which led to humanism. Even though the time saw many political and social upheaval, renaissance is famous for its artistic contributions to the world. Some of the famous contributors are Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. The Protestant Reformation of the 16th century and Age of Enlightenment in the 17th century led to the Scientific Revolution. Expansion of Europe 
It was during this time that the power of Europe was at its peak, and the civilizations here were more urbanized than any other civilizations of the world. However, the civilization slowly weakened and distorted. The causes continue to be a matter of debate among the historians. For instance, China was one of the most radical civilizations of the Middle Ages. The Chinese had a well-developed monetary economy, and the peasants of the nation who were free could sell their harvest in the market. As per the historian Adam Smith, China has always been one of the most prosperous, rich, industrious, and urbanized countries of the world, enjoying technological benefit, and had a monopoly in the production of cast iron, suspension bridge construction, compass, piston bellows, and printing. Marco Polo, who visited the country five hundred years ago, has described it the same as it has been by the travelers from the eighteenth century. The downfall of the civilization was because of the geographical conditions. China, Middle East, and India are all surrounded by oceans and mountains, but once the barriers are crossed, the land is completely flat. Europe also enjoyed this protection from the invaders of Central Asia, as the Carpathians. Alps, Apennines, and Pyrenees mountains ranges bound the nation. The invasion of the nomads was devastating once they managed to cross the barriers. The Islamic Golden Age came to an end when the Mongol sack of Baghdad attacked in 1258. China and India were under constant attacks, and Russia also spent a few years under the Mongol Tartars. Western and Central Europe was further away from Central Asia and faced less threats of invasion. The Ottoman Empire ruled the most Middle East. The Ming Dynasty reigned over China, and the Mongols held the reins of India. One of the undoubtedly vital terrestrial factors in the rise of Europe was the Mediterranean Sea. Which for ages had functioned as a nautical superhighway, nurturing the exchange of people, merchandises, ideas, and creations. Many historians argue that the European institutions aided in its expansion. The free market economics and property rights were much stronger than anywhere in the world. However, the European maritime has also been given the credit of its expansion. Atlantic states of Spain, France, England, Netherlands, and Portugal. Spain and Portugal were the leading vanquishers, and Europeans were inspired by them. Iberian Union was the result of their union, the first global empire. The French, English, and Dutch started dominating the Atlantic, and a series of war was fought in the 17th and 18th centuries, which ended with the Napoleonic Wars and the British rose as a new world power. Regional developments. In 1501, Persia was ruled by Safavid Empire, after which the Afsharid Empire took over in 1736, and the Qajar Empire in 1796. The Pashtuns and Uzbeks held the east and north areas. The Ottoman Empire ruled the Balkans, Middle East, and almost all of North Africa. The Swahili Empire of Africa faded one faded once the Portuguese corroded their lands, while the Moroccans took over Songhai Empire in 1591. Butuwa Roswi and Mutapa were smaller nations from Kingdom of Zimbabwe. Adil Sultanate invaded Ethiopia in 1531, and in 1769 saw the ages of the princes or Zemene Mesafint, where the country was ruled by the warlords who had a prince for their head. Oyo and Benin empires saw their golden age during this period, and the Ashanti Empire became a powerful nation in 1670, which is now Ghana. The Qing Dynasty took over the Ming Dynasty in 1644 in China, who rules until 1912. From 1568 to 1603, Japan went through the Azuchi Momoyama period, trailed by Edo period from 1603 to 1868. The Joseon Dynasty of Korea endured all Chinese and Japanese invasions and rules through from 1392 to 1910. In the 16th century, the Mughal Empire set its foot in Indian subcontinent and overthrew Deccan and Delhi Sultanates. Later, the British East took over India.
present-day Indonesian Sumatra and Malaysia were jointly known as Sultanate of Malacca and were invaded and ruled by the Portuguese in 1511. The southern tip of the Malay Peninsula was dominantly ruled by Johor Sultanate. The whole of Southeast Asia was subjugated to colonization of the Europeans, except for Thailand. The Europeans briskly colonized Americas, quickly displacing and destroying the civilizations of Inca and Aztecs. Britain, France and Portugal settled in large numbers and imported thousands of African slaves. After years of struggle and war, thirteen British colonies declared independence and became the United States of America in 1776. In Russia, the first Tsar was Ivan IV in 1547, who seized Turkic Kanates and made Russia a powerful country. Western European countries developed and expanded in ways of technology and were always in war. The wars were primarily religion-based, Christian versus Muslim or Catholic versus Protestants. Napoleon became powerful in France, who waged war against the world to rule it, and what followed was Napoleonic Wars, which began in 19th century. Late Modern Period 1750-1899 Science changed the lives of people, and the scientific revolution led to industrial revolution which transformed markets of the world. Although the revolutions began in the 17th century, the inventions and discoveries were applied on in the middle of 18th century. The industrial revolution started in Great Britain, where the British used many new techniques of mechanization, factory and mass production to produce more products using less manpower and in less time. The late 18th century also saw the birth of democracy after the French and American revolutions. After Europeans gained control over America, the revolutions and their independence turned their ways to Asia and Oceania. Britain took control over Egypt, Indian subcontinent and Malay Peninsula. The Dutch strengthened their control over Dutch East Indies, whereas France took Indochina. South Africa, Australia and New Zealand were also colonized by the British. Russia colonized Siberia. Europe was in an advantageous position for two reasons. The wealth got from the Atlantic trade and business culture. The African slave trade helped them increase the wealth got from the plantations. 1900-1945 most of the world was under the control of the Europeans. As the century outspread, the global system subjugated by competing powers was exposed to austere stresses and eventually seemed to yield to a more fluid edifice of sovereign nations structured on Western models. But soon it looked as if the global system controlled by opponent powers yielded to a structure controlled by one power, a system planned like Eastern rather than Western simulations. This alteration was catalyzed by World War I, which brought much destruction and weakened the French and British forces and monarchs, the after result of which was influential philosophies. The Russian Revolution fashioned the first communist state in 1917, while 1920 and 1930 witnessed militarist fascist deputisms gain control in Germany, Italy and Spain. The enmities between the already rival countries and the financial chaos of Great Depression gave way to World War II. 1945-2000 to 2000. When the World War II came to an end in 1945, the countries together founded the United Nations to prevent further wars among nations. The United States of America, China, United Kingdom and Soviet Union were declared victorious in World War II and came to be known as the Big Four. Later, France was added to the Council and now there were five permanent seats in the United Nations Security Council. Suspicions among each other led to a 45-year-old Cold War between United States and Soviet Union. The Asian and African countries soon declared themselves independent but faced epidemics, literacy, poverty and neocolonialism. 
Science and technology progressed in leaps and bounds in the 20th century, and the standard of living and life expectancy of the people increased. As discoveries happened, the world shifted from coal-based economy to petroleum-based economy. Engines, roads, automobiles, everything happened in a few years. World witnessed globalization and even reached the space. Humans discovered the structure of DNA, treatment for the diseases were now bettered, human genome was sequenced, literacy rates increased, ways of agriculture improved because of the machines. Computers, internet, motion pictures, music recordings, global climate change, epidemics like Ebola, volcanoes, near-to-earth comets and asteroids, declining of natural resources, overpopulation and nuclear proliferation. Contemporary History Contemporary history is the history which covers all that has happened from 1900 to present. 21st Century Rising economic globalization and integration marks the 21st century with subsequent augmented danger to interweaved economies and by the growth of communications with smartphones and the Internet. The period has also been marked by increasing military globalization and unipolarity, with consequential steadying of harmony and the expansion of democracy. The demand and competition for resources has increased because of the mounting industrialization and population mainly in Brazil, China and India. This amplified demand is causing increased levels of ecological degradation and also raised the threats of global warming. This also gave rise to developing sources which could be renewed, especially wind and solar, and demands for cleaner fossil fuel technologies also increased, and the use of nuclear energy expanded. World also witnessed many terrorist attacks, which continue today, and is one of the major threats globally. Conclusion The history of the world is hard to be summed up, and there is a treasure of works yet awaited to be discovered, understood, and deciphered by man. Humans have always been intelligent and have evolved quickly. There is no idea to what future holds for us, but what started 13.7 billion years ago has been all mostly preserved for us to understand their happenings. They've learned and implemented according to what nature provided to them and developed highly. Mankind will continue to evolve till their presence and continue to add to the history of the world until the universe lives.